Hello YouTube and welcome to another OPN Sense tutorial. So in this video I'm going to show you how to set up WireGuard for OPN Sense. So are you ready? Let's get started. So as you have seen on one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up OpenVPN on OPN Sense. But in this video I'll show you to do the same but this time using another lightweight, simple and very fast VPN protocol called WireGuard. So actually WireGuard seems to actually be very fast because it employs modern cryptography, okay? So let's do that. You will see that it's very simple to set up WireGuard. All you have to do is to follow actually five steps in order to reach your goal. So first of all, let me log on to my uh, OPN Sense firewall, okay? So in order to actually set up WireGuard, you have first to go to the menu for uh, dedicated to VPNs. Here we go. So you can see among the options here, we have an option to set up WireGuard, okay? So let's click on this WireGuard menu here, okay? So we have sub-menus, we have instances, peers, peers generator, status, and log file, okay? So the first step is actually to create an instance. So let's create an instance by clicking on this instances uh, menu, and I will just click on this plus button here, okay? So here, as you can see, the option is enabled by default, and here you have to give it a name. So let's call it, for example, uh, WireGuard Home. Okay, so you can name it whatever you want. And we're gonna actually generate a pair of keys. We have to generate a public key and a private key. So you can do that very easily clicking this gear button here to generate new key pair. Here we go. So you can see our keys has been generated. We have also to set up a listen port. So here by default, uh, WireGuard listen on port 51821, okay? But you can specify whatever port you want, okay? Then we have to set up a tunnel address. So this is the network that will be assigned to our WireGuard clients. So normally you have to choose a network that is different for, from your actually local network. So me, I'm using 192.168.1.0 slash 24 as local network. So I will choose a different one. So for example, let's choose 172.17.1.0 slash 24 as a tunnel subnet, okay? So here we go. And we can leave other option as it is, okay? So this is all what you need in order to set up our instance, okay? You could also click on this advanced mode here if you want to set up more actually options. And finally, we click on the save button here. Okay, here we go. So we have created our instance. So the next step is to create actually our peer, okay? Okay, now that we have set up our WireGuard instance, we have to create a peer. And under OPN Sense, it's pretty easy to create a peer using this tab here called Peer Generator. So I'll click on this Peer Generator and I'll try to create one. So by default, it has chosen the instance that I already created. And here I have to give it the endpoint. So normally the endpoint is your public IP address. But if you have, for example, a DNS also a host name, you can use it. So I will here use mine, which is aminos ninatos.dndns.net. And I will also give it the default port, which is 518. Two, one, okay. And here for the name, you can give it whatever you want. I will give it as name WireGuard user, for example. OK, 
OK. And you can see it has generated a pair of uh, keys. We have our public key and private key also. And address, so the, the first one from the subnet that we have used for our tuner has been given here to our first peer which is actually called WireGuard user, okay? Okay, so next option here is the allowed IP. So by default, it can actually reach any IPs on your actually local net. But here you can specify the exact uh, subnet for your local network or you can just leave it like that okay here also you can give it uh, the keep alive internal interval actually so let's uh, put for example uh, 25 and you click on this I here icon in order to see what that is mean so it means the set persistent keep interval in second okay and if you have a local DNS server that you want to use, you can also use it here or you can just give it the public one, like for example Cloudflare or Google if you want, okay? And you can see here that the configuration has been generated, okay? So this configuration, you can use it with your client. So if I copy this configuration here, okay? and then you open your uh, WireGuard client. So for example, for Windows, you're using this WireGuard client here. You have to add actually empty config tunnel here at the bottom. Here we go. You give it a name, for example, for mine, that would be WireGuard home. And you delete this config and you paste the one that you have copied, okay? And you save it. So now you have actually configured your client and of course you can actually export that to your actually client in order to use it okay or if you have a mobile phone you can just this QR code into the WireGuard client in your mobile phone okay so you can see how easy it is to set up uh, your client using this uh, peer generator, okay? So I will uh, just enable WireGuard here at the bottom and apply the changes. Okay, so let me return back to these instances and also apply, okay? So this is the second step that we have done, which is pretty easy. Now we have actually other steps that we want to make. So we have first to create a WireGuard interface, okay? So if you go to interfaces, assignment, you will see that a new device has been added here called WG0, which is our WireGuard interface. So I will choose it and I will add it, okay? And here it is, it has been added, but it's not yet enabled so you have to enable this interface so let's click on this wireguard home here and i will enable it and also you can prevent interface removable if you want okay and you leave all other option as it is and i will save that okay and not to forget to apply changes here we go so after that we have to create firewall rules. We want to create a rule for any device on the outside in order to connect to our WireGuard server. And also we want to create another rule for the WireGuard actually network in order to connect to the outside. So let's do that. So this can be done very easily if you go to firewall here, rules, here we go, and I will add rule on our one interface. Here we go. So let's create another one. So the action is passed because we want to allow outside devices to connect to our one interface here. So the interface is one, the direction is N. The TCP version is of course IPv4. For the protocol here, I will 
choose UDP because WireGuard use UDP port 51821. Okay, for the source, it can be any, and for the destination, it will be our one address actually. Here we go. And for the port, we have to choose other and input the default port for our actually wire guard, which is 518821. Okay, so 512821. Here we go. So, of course, you have if you used a different port, you can input it here. And not to forget to log packet that are handled by this user in order to see who is trying to connect, for example, to your server here. Okay, and that's it. We have to save that. Also, it's better to make a description. So, for example, here I will input allow WireGuard access, for example, and I will save that. And also, do not forget to apply changes. Okay, so our rule has been added, as you can see here. Another thing that you have to do is to create, this time on the WireGuard interface, another rule in order to allow the WireGuard subnet to connect to the outside. Okay, so let's do that very quickly. So I will choose here the WireGuard actually home interface and I will create another rule okay okay so let's add another rule here clicking this plus button here so of course the action is to pass the direction is n for the WireGuard home interface so here for the protocol that would be actually any okay the source is of course here our WireGuard home net and for the destination that would be any and you can also log track if you, if you want and make also a description for example allow WireGuard net to access any subnet actually okay and you can leave other option as it is and we're gonna save this rule also and not forget always to apply changes here we go and you can see the rule has been added actually okay so last uh, we have to create what we call a normalization rule. So this normalization rule will allows us to actually reassemble fragmented packets and also clean up uh, some malformed or suspicious packet and also prevent from some evasions attack. Okay. So in order to create this rule, it's pretty easy. On the same firewall menu, you have to go to your settings here and click on this normalization okay and by default here are the options that we're gonna use so let's create a new rule by uh, actually uh, hitting this plus button here okay so the interface would be wireguard group okay for the direction that would be actually any okay so the protocol any will leave all other options for the description here I will say low wireguard actually MSS okay and here you input your MSS value so if you are passing IPv4 then IPv6 protocol so you can just use 1360 actually as you have seen on the documentation okay and that's it you hit this save button and also you apply your changes here we go 
So and now we have fulfilled the five steps in order to configure actually WireGuard on OpenSense. So here I'll try to connect to it using my mobile phone and see what we get. So actually I successfully connected to my uh, home net using WireGuard and you can see that very easily if you go for example to your lobby here, dashboard and you can see here there is a widget dedicated specially to actually WireGuard. So you can see here the client that are online is one because I'm connected via my mobile phone actually, okay? You can also view the connection if you go to actually VPN, WireGuard and you scroll down for the status and here we go, you can see the IP address from where I'm connected to actually my WireGuard server. You can see the number of packets sent and received, okay? So you can see how easy it is to set up WireGuard on OpenSense. So that was just a brief video to show you how to set up uh, WireGuard on PFSense. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, drop them in the comment below. As always, I hope it has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Bye bye!